As your guide on these excursions into the realm of science and engineering, I am taking you into the field of electronics, where tiny particles of electricity are the star performers. This is a phototube, popularly called an electric eye. When light strikes the chemically treated surface of the curved piece of metal within the tube, electrons are driven off by the million. These tiny invisible bits of electricity are collected by the wire rod to which a small external voltage is applied. Because the resultant flow of electricity is thus light controlled, the tube is usually shielded so that light from only one direction may be affected. Watch the meter as light falls upon the tube. The more light, the more current. The less light, the less current. The meter measures minute quantities of electric energy. See, when the light is intercepted, the meter shows no current. Light and light only is controlling the flow of electricity. Because this current is too weak to be useful, another electron tube, a thyrotron, is used. It amplifies the phototube current and acts like a valve to turn on or off large quantities of electric power. Here we have a phototube properly covered to see light from one direction, a thyrotron and a large electric lamp. Remember the old story of the country boy who tried to blow out the Mazda lamp and failed? Well, this fellow is just twice as good, for by holding a lighted match before the electric eye, he can light the lamp and then blow it out, this time successfully. If now another lighted match is held before the tube, and then the lighted lamp is moved before the opening, something that seems like perpetual motion results. For isn't the light of the lamp causing the phototube to signal the thyrotron to light the lamp, which is in turn controlling the phototube? There is a catch, of course. Suppose the electricity supplying the thyrotron is turned off. Then out goes the lamp. Because the phototube is simply a control device and not a source of power, it may be used with other types of equipment to control electricity by the absence as well as by the presence of light. For example, this drinking fountain has no handles or pedals to operate. Instead, there's a light source in one box and a phototube which controls the mechanism in the other. Just lean over and presto, there's your drink. The interruption of the light beam causes the phototube to operate an electric relay which controls the flow of water. A fashionable racetrack, an important stake event, the flash of colorful silks, thousands of eager, excited racing fans, the top thoroughbreds of the country away to a perfect start come thundering down the back stretch. As the field turns for home, the crowd grows wild. It looks like a head-and-head -head battle. Keep your eye on number five. He's coming up fast on the outside. They're nearing the wire. Will he make it? Here's the finish. And our photo tubes have been unemotionally on the job, controlling a high-speed camera which films the finish. A line on the center of the lens coincides with the wire. Quick developing comes next. And within three minutes, an accurate, perfect picture of the finish is sent down to the judges. What the picture will show is undeniable proof of the winner. The mathematically correct placement of the camera and photo tubes makes error impossible. The horses, by intercepting a light beam, literally take their own picture. And the winner? It's number five. And there is no appeal. A busy restaurant. One of a popular chain, noted equally for its good food and prompt, courteous service people anxious to be served, so they may be on their way. Attractive waitresses with loaded trays, hands full, hurrying back and forth to the kitchen. But there's no delay, for the doors operate automatically upon approach. Again, our electron tubes controlled by an electric eye and light source, ingeniously built into the decorative railing, are on the job, saving time, energy, and maybe chinaware. Here's a similar application in one of New York's busiest office buildings. How convenient when your hands may be full of packages or you're in a hurry to keep an important engagement. An ever watchful electric eye signals the mechanism which is built in over the doorway and unfailingly the door opens upon approach. Such applications are typical of the many ways in which these new tools are being employed. It is the job of research, you know, 
to discover scientific principles of engineering to apply these principles to produce more and more benefits for more and more people. It is often necessary, therefore, to construct devices for study and demonstration purposes, such as this one. Suppose we let this upright glass cylinder represent a room, tunnel, smokestack, or any place of like nature where the clearness of the air is important for safety. The air in the glass now is relatively clear, but if some smoke from a cigarette is blown in, see what happens. A small electric bulb in the lower end of the tube shines upon a mirror at the opposite end. This mirror, which has openings around its edges for the smoke to escape, reflects the light down the cylinder again to a lens. Beneath the lens is a phototube, set to be non-operative when the air is clear, a thyrotron and an electric blower. When the air becomes cloudy, the light becomes dimmer. The phototube responds to this change and operates the blower, which clears the air quickly and automatically. By the way, are you a good shot? With this gun, you can't miss, for it fires bullets of light. When the trigger is pulled, a small but powerful Mazda lamp inside the breech lights. The time it stays lit may be set from less than one to 30 seconds. A series of lenses within the barrel focuses the light upon the target. The bullseye of the target is a narrow slit behind which is an electric eye and relay which lights a lamp when a hit is scored. Anyone can be a good shot, for the aim may be moved till the spot of light from the gun hits the bullseye. The longer the time, the better the aim. It's like water streaming from a hose. Aim, pull the trigger, then change the aim until you hit the bullseye. Phototubes respond to many and rapid changes of light intensity. It is because of this fact, in part, that talking pictures are possible. On the film you are now hearing, there is a photographic image of my voice. The narrow, black and clear stripe along the row of pictures is the soundtrack. The jagged edge of the black line, the little hills and valleys, is a picture of my voice. This film, running through the projector at 90 feet a minute, passes a very tiny slit. On one side of the slit, there is a constant light source. On the other, a phototube. The soundtrack, with its varying width of black and clear areas in passing this slit, increases or decreases the light seen by the tube. These light changes are thus converted into electric current changes, which through other electron tubes and loudspeakers reproduce the sound of my voice. Since phototubes never tire or wink, and since, too, they are even more sensitive than our eyes to minute changes of light, they are being used more and more as new tools to aid the eye as well as to do things which the eyes cannot do, to play their part along with the growing family of electron tubes in increasing productive efficiency, in making available to more and more people more benefits.